Hello and welcome to another edition of History Science Finder. My name is Zoe McDonald and today I'm on the beautiful island of Maui in the state of Hawaii. And today, instead of dying with plants or lichens or mushrooms or the usual things, we are going straight to the earth and seeing if what we can get with this beautiful rich red earth. This has been a dye used pre-contact for many, many, many generations. I'm just gonna collect some and see what we can get. Thanks so much. Dyeing with mud, earth, or minerals is integral to exploring ancestral dyeing and is still used all over the world in traditional ways. Now, if you're interested in dyeing a cotton t-shirt with red mud, you're gonna need to add a binding agent like soy milk, and you should be able to find videos exploring those methods. Now, today I'll be dyeing wool yarn. Most of the dyeing I do is yarn simply because I like to use it for further crafting, like for weaving and for knitting. So I have been researching traditional dyeing here on Hawaii, and I would really like to interview a traditional dyer from the native Hawaiian community for their perspectives. I haven't been able to line that up yet, but hopefully we can do that moving forward uh, in a future video. For now, I researched as much advice as I could and headed out from our temporary home here on Western Maui to find red earth. Now, ideally I wanted to find red clay, but after searching for some time, uh, I did end up on a country road heading towards a coffee plantation and their soil there was a beautiful deep orangey red. I pulled over and hunted around for a spot where the soil looked as fine as I could get it. I collected about two pounds worth and with a trusty sand shovel from one of my kids and I took it home. Near there, I took it home and started to prep the wool. For the trip, I brought along wool skeins with three separate pre-treatments to test out colors, two of which had been pre mordanted This just means one skein was heated for an hour with a 6% solution of iron ferrous sulfate, um, and another skein for an hour was heated with a 16% solution of alum or aluminum sulfate, and the last skein was left untreated. Introducing yarn to metals in this way allows for greater color variety and tones and shades that are deeper, richer, and more stable. I'll post a link below to a video on just how to do this. I took my three skeins and I let them soak for an hour. Soaking them like this before adding them to the dye pot allows them to sink down more easily and take color more evenly. Time to set up the dye vat. Before adding the dye material, I always like to add a filter layer that I can pull out later. This time I used a five gallon paint mesh bag available at most paint stores. They are inexpensive and reusable. If you don't have one, you can also use a fine mesh strainer or cheesecloth. Once it was in place, I added enough dye soil to fill the pot half full. This was approximately half a pound. I added in water from the tap, stirring it thoroughly, and placed it on the stove to boil for an hour. I make sure to only simmer, but I figured some boiling wouldn't cause the minerals too many issues. Once cooled, I removed the bag and gave the mixture a good stir. At this stage, I added in my three wettest skeins, one with no mordant, one mordanted with alum, and the other mordanted with iron. I've heard that a mordant doesn't make a big difference with minerals, but I wanted to check. I then let the pot simmer for an hour, being careful not to let it boil, which can affect the luster of the wool. I stirred every 10 minutes or so and flipped the fiber at the halfway mark, 
to try and get a more even color. I let the pot cool for several hours and then gave the wool a thorough washing. A lot of the color came out. In the end, the skein with no mordant and the alum mordanted wool both came out the same pale reddish peach, while the iron mordanted skein came out a deeper shade of reddish brown. All told, I don't really know how reliable these colors would be for articles that you wear a lot and wash often. I get the feeling a lot of this color is simply tiny particles of clay that are embedded in the wool fibers as opposed to the fibers truly absorbing the colors. But I do think this would be great uh, to dye colors that represent the place the soil was collected from and would be great for articles like wall hangings, macrame, or pieces that you would wash very carefully and seldomly. Thanks everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe for more videos.